Listen. In this video, we will learn about what is a tenth. Chanda is making a greeting card for Babban. She has drawn such a flower on a paper by using ten similar triangles. She started coloring the petals of the flower with red color. Oh no! I have only painted one petal so far and the color is over. Chanda thought nervously. Now Chanda is thinking, how many parts of the flower has she colored? Children, do you remember fractions? Can you express the part of the flower in which Chanda has filled the color? in the form of a fraction if you wish to you may stop the video and find the answer this flower is made up of 10 similar triangles and chanda has colored one of these triangles this means chanda has filled red color in one tenth part of the flower Chanda immediately took her unfinished greeting card and reached her friend Golu's house. Golu, I have made this greeting card for Babban, but I could color only one tenth of this flower. Can you paint the rest of it? Then both of us together will give it to Babban. Okay, you have colored 0.1 part of the flower. Golu said to Chanda. Chanda could not understand anything. I know about fractions, but uh, what is this decimal? Chanda asked Golu. Look Chanda, decimal means our whole is divided into 10 equal parts. And we are taking one part out of these 10 parts and we write this after the decimal point like this and because this fraction is less than one whole we write the number zero in the units place before the decimal point in this way we write one tenth part of your whole flower as zero point one Wow, Golu, this is so much fun. Now you quickly paint these remaining parts too so that we can give it to Babban. Chanda told Golu. Golu immediately brought this blue color bottle and began to color the rest of the flower. Chanda, I have colored the remaining nine parts. Chanda is wondering how she can write the parts of the flower filled by Golu using decimal? Children, can you tell how we can write the parts of the flower in which Golu has filled color using decimal? If you wish to, you may stop the video and think about the answer. Golu has colored 9 out of the 10 parts of the flower. Because our whole is divided into 10 equal parts, we will first write the decimal point in this way. Now Golu has colored 9 parts of this whole. Therefore, we will write the number 9 after the decimal point. And because 9 tenth is less than 1 whole, we will write 0 in the units place before the decimal point. In this way, Golu has filled blue color in 9 tenth or 0 0.9 parts of the flower. Chanda and Golu were very happy. They immediately went and gave the greeting card to Babban. On receiving that beautiful greeting card, Babban started dancing happily. Children, in this video we learned about what is a tenth. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples.
Hello children. In the previous video, we learned about what is a tenth. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. It is very hot this time in Champapur. All the villagers are distressed due to the heat. Raju and Bablu are walking in the market. Raju, it is so hot nowadays. I have to take a bath twice a day. Bablu said to Raju, wiping his sweat. Yes, Bablu, I am also feeling very hot. This morning, I heard on the radio that today the temperature in Champapur is 35.4 degrees Celsius. What is degree Celsius, Raju? Degree Celsius is the unit for measuring temperature. Raju explained to Bablu. Okay, I understood degree Celsius. 35.4 degree Celsius. Raju, 35 is fine. But what is this 0.4? Bablu asked Raju. One tenth indicates that a degree is being divided into 10 equal parts. And because the number after the decimal point is 4, we can say that here we are taking 4 out of the 10 parts of a degree. In this way, we can also write 0.4 as 4 tenth in the form of a fraction. Raju explained to Bablu. Well, if tomorrow's temperature is 36.2 degrees Celsius, then we can say that 0.2 degrees Celsius is 2 tenth of a degree Celsius or 2 by 10 of a degree Celsius. Bablu said excitedly. Alright Bablu, let us go for a walk on the seashore. We will get some relief from this terrible heat. Wow, Raju, let's buy new slippers for you and me so that we can have a lot of fun on the beach. In the shoe shop, Gagu first measured Raju's foot. Raju, your foot is a little over 15 centimeters. Bablu told Raju. Yes, Bablu, my foot measures 15 centimeters and 4 millimeters. Now, what is this millimeter? Bablu asked Raju. Look, there are 10 equal parts of a centimeter on a scale. So, how much part of a centimeter is each of these parts? Raju asked Bablu. One tenth. Bablu quickly responded. Exactly. One tenth of a centimeter is called a millimeter. And the measure of your foot is 4 tenth or 4 millimeters longer than 15 centimeters. Bablu said excitedly. And do you know, since we can also write a tenth using decimal, we can say that the measurement of my foot is 15.4 centimeters. Raju told Bablu. Now Bablu measured his foot. Bablu's foot's measurement is 7 tenths longer than 13 centimeters. Children, can you tell how we can write Bablu's foot's measurement using millimeters and decimal? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. Bablu's foot's measure is 7 tenths longer than 13 centimeter. This means Bablu's foot's measurement is 13 centimeters and 7 millimeters or 13.7 centimeters. Raju and Bablu bought their new slippers and happily went for a walk on the beach. Children, in this video we learned more about 10th through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this.
Hello children! In the previous video we learned more about 10th through some interesting examples. In this video we will see some of the misconceptions related to this. Raju and Bablu collected some money and bought an eraser from the market. Raju, let us divide this eraser in two halves. Bablu said to Raju. Okay, let's measure it using a ruler so that we know how long half of the eraser will be. Raju measured the eraser with a ruler. Children, can you tell how long the eraser is? Absolutely right! The eraser is 3 centimeters long. Now, Raju and Bablu saw that half of the eraser is 5 tenths more than a centimeter. Raju immediately said, Bablu, half of the eraser is 1.5 centimeters long. No! Half of the eraser is 1 centimeter and 5 millimeters long. Bablu told Raju. Both Raju and Bablu started quarreling. Just then, Bunny was passing by. Bunny, can you tell us whether half of this eraser is 1.5 centimeters long or 1 centimeter and 5 millimeters long? Raju asked Bunny. Bunny burst out laughing. <laughs> hey, both! Bunny told Raju. Raju and Bablu could not understand anything. Children, is what Bunny said correct? Half of the eraser is 5 tenths more than a centimeter. So we can write it as 1.5 using decimals. And we also know that one tenth of a centimeter is equal to one millimeter. So, five tenths of a centimeter will be equal to five millimeters. Bunny's statement is absolutely correct. Half of the eraser is 1.5 centimeters or one centimeter and five millimeters long. Raju and Bablu split the eraser in half. Children, because millimeter is one-tenth of a centimeter, we can write the length of any object in these three ways and it is exactly the same. Children, in this video we learned about some misconceptions related to tenth. Hello children, in this video we will learn about what is hundredth. There is a sale going on in several places in the Champapur market. Bunny and Bhola have come to the market to shop. First, they have come to Gaggu's shop to buy toys. There is a huge discount on toys at Gaggu's shop in the sale. Bhola wants to buy a new badminton racket. The new price, 110.50 rupees, has been written on this badminton racket by striking out the old price in this way. Bunny, what kind of a price is this? I understood 110 rupees, but how will we give this 0 0.50 rupees? Bhola asked Bunny. Bunny laughed and said, <laughs> Bhola, how many paise is 1 rupee equal to? 100 paise, Bhola replied quickly. Exactly. Suppose if we represent 100 paise by making a 100 squares in this way, then one square would be equal to one paise. If we take one of these hundred squares, then we can write it in the form of a fraction as one by hundred. 
Therefore, we can say that one paise is one by hundred or one hundredth part of a rupee. We can write one hundredth part of any number using decimal point as 0 0.01. The price of a badminton racket is 110.50 rupees. 0 0.01 rupee or one hundredth of a rupee is equal to one paise. Therefore, 0 0.50 rupees will be equal to 50 hundredth part of 1 rupee or 50 paise. In this way, the price of a badminton racket is 110 rupees and 50 paise. Bunny explained to Bhola. Bhola quickly understood. Bhola bought the badminton racket by giving 110 rupees and 50 paise to Gagu. Now, both of them have come to eat ice cream at Babban's ice cream stall. Chocobar ice cream is being sold at a heavy discount at Babban's stall. Seeing the new price of Chocobar ice cream, 4 rupees 25 paise, Bhola told Bunny, Bunny, I can write the new price of the ice cream using decimal point. Children, can you tell how we will write the new price of chocobar ice cream using decimal point? If you wish to, you can stop the video and find the answer. Chocobar ice cream costs 4 rupees and 25 paise. Just as we write one tenth of any number using a decimal point, in the same way, we can write one hundredth of any number using a decimal point. Here, 25 paise is 25 hundredth part of a rupee. So, we will first draw a decimal point, then write zero before it because 25 hundredth is less than one whole. Now, since 25 paise is 25 hundredth of a rupee, we will write the number 25 in front of the decimal point. And do you know how we read the number written in the hundredth part? We will always read the number written in the hundredth part after the decimal point by speaking its digits. Like, the number written here becomes 0 0.25. Now, if we add 0 to 4, what do we get? 4. In this way, we can write the new price of Chocobar ice cream as 4.25 rupees using the decimal point. Bunny and Bhola bought one one chocobar ice cream each from Babban and happily returned home eating ice cream. Children, in this video we learned about what is hundredth. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello kids, in the previous video, we learned about what is hundredth. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Appu and Chanda have come to the market to buy tables for their respective homes. Chanda liked this table very much. She asked uncle, How long is this table uncle? This table is a 1.20 meters long. Uncle told
told Chanda. How many meters would that be, Uncle? I didn't understand anything. Asked Chanda. Chanda, dear, I will explain to you. Tell me, how many centimeters is one meter? Hundred centimeters. Exactly. It means one centimeter is one hundredth part of a meter. Let me tell you how we can write the hundredth part of any number using decimal point. A centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. Here. We are dividing one by one hundred. Can you tell me how many zeros are there in a hundred? Uncle asked Chanda. Two zeros. Absolutely right. Now it's very easy. We will move the decimal point. Twice to the left, starting from the end of the number, like this one. And because this number only has one digit, we can add a zero on the left side, and then slide the decimal point to the left for the second time. In this way, one centimeter becomes zero point zero one meter. Uncle explained to Chanda. Okay, now I understood, Uncle. The length of this table is one point two zero meters. Two zero or twenty hundredth of a meter is written after the decimal. Because one hundredth part of a meter is equal to one centimeter, twenty hundredth part of a meter will be equal to one into twenty, or twenty centimeters. So the length of this table will be one meter and twenty centimeters. Well done, Chanda. You learned very quickly, Uncle. Said to Chanda, Appu liked this table. Uncle, what is the length of this table? Chanda asked Uncle. Two meters and five centimeters. Uncle said to Chanda. Children, can you tell how we can write the length of this table? Using decimal point. If you wish to, you can stop the video and find the answer. The length of the table is two meters and five centimeters. Five centimeters is the five hundredth part of a meter. In other words, we are dividing five by hundred. To write it using the decimal point, we will move the decimal point to the left once, starting from the end of five. First, according to the procedure taught by Uncle, and then, because five is made up of only one digit, we will once again move the decimal point to the left. By adding a zero to the left of five, in this way, five centimeters is zero point zero five meters. Now, if we add two meters to it, the length of the table will be two point zero five meters. Chanda and Appu bought their own tables and happily returned home. Children, in this video we learned more about 
what is hundred through some interesting examples in the next video we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this children in the previous video we learned more about hundredth through some interesting examples in this video we will see some of the misconceptions related to this bunny has come to help barbole uncle at his shop today babban has come to buy cloth for his scarf from uncle he asked uncle for a 2.5 meter long cloth uncle asked bunny to cut a 2.5 meters long cloth and give it to babban bunny measured the cloth with a tape and gave it to babban babban paid the money for the cloth to uncle and returned home on returning home when babban measured the cloth with his tape he found that the length of the cloth was 2.05 meters he immediately reached uncle's shop when he told this to uncle uncle once again measured that cloth with his tape and found that babban was right the length of the cloth was actually 2.05 meters he asked bunny about this but uncle 2.05 meters is equal to 2.5 meters right bunny said to uncle uh, look bunny dear in 2.05 meters decimal point is followed by 05 or 500 part of a meter and uh, how many centimeters of a meter is equal to 500s 5 centimeters bunny quickly replied exactly uh, in this way 2.05 is equal to 2 meters and 5 centimeters now in the same way in 2.5 meters the number after the decimal is 5 or the 5 tenth part of a meter 1 tenth part of a meter is equal to 10 cm therefore the 5 tenth part of a meter will be equal to 10 times 5 or 50 cm thus 2.5 meters is equal to 2 meters and 50 cm uncle explained bunny well now i understand uncle that 2.05 meter and 2.5 meter are not equal and i accidentally gave babban cloth of the wrong length bunny told uncle bunny immediately took back the cloth from babban and this time measured 2.5 meters or 2 meters and 50 cm of cloth using his tape cut it and gave it to babban babban happily returned home with the cloth of the right length this time children in this video we learned about some misconceptions related to hundredth hello children In this video we will learn to solve some interesting word problems related to the 10th and 100th part. Bunny is thinking that he will go for a vacation for some days with Babban. 
The winters in Champapur are getting very cold. So Bunny wants to go to a place where the temperature is the highest. Bunny immediately turned on the news on his TV. Temperatures of various places are shown in the news. Hmm. Which one of these places has the highest temperature? Bunny started thinking. Children, let us help Bunny. To find the place with the highest temperature, we have to compare the temperature in degrees Celsius shown for these places. Let's look at an easy process to do this. Children, whenever we want to compare numbers written in decimal, we will compare the numbers written to the left of the decimal point first and then compare the numbers written on the right or tenth place. Like here, first we will compare the numbers written in the tens place of all these temperatures. Firstly, we shall write down the tens place of these temperatures and compare them. The temperatures of Champapur and Pampapur have one in tens place. And those for Ulta Pulta Nagar and Maya Nagar have two in the tens place. Since one is lesser than two, we will now only compare the numbers in the units places of Ulta Pulta Nagar and Maya Nagar to find the place with the highest temperature. The units place of temperatures in both the places of Ulta Pulta Nagar and Maya Nagar have the number 5 in them. Therefore, we will now compare the numbers written in the 10th places after the decimal point in the temperatures of these two places. The number in the 10th place in the temperature of Ulta Pulta Nagar is 9 and that in the 10th place of the temperature of Maya Nagar is 1. Since 9 is more than 1, we can say that the temperature of Ulta Pulta Nagar is the highest among all these places. Bunny also found the place with the highest temperature just like us. Bunny and Babban collected some money together. Now Bunny is thinking, I have my 120 rupees 25 paise and Babban's 230 rupees 50 paise. Now, how much money do I have in total? Bunny immediately wrote this addition on a paper. I will first do this addition like a simple addition. This gives me 35,075. Now, because both these numbers have two digits after the decimal point, I will write a decimal point in this way in the answer. Oh wow! I now have a total of 350.75 or 350 rupees 75 paise. Bunny got very excited. He bought two train tickets to go from Champapur to Ulta Pulta Nagar. And together, Bunny and Babban reached Ulta Pulta Nagar for holidays. Children, in this video, we learned to solve some interesting word problems related to the 10th and 100th part. In the next video, we will learn to solve some more interesting problems related to this. Hello kids! 
In the previous video, we learned to solve some fun word puzzles related to 10th and 100th. In this video, we will learn to solve some more interesting puzzles related to this. Winter is about to begin. Bunny has woven a dozen woolen caps to survive the cold weather. Bunny is going to sell these caps in the market in the city. On the way, Bunny is thinking, I will earn a lot of money by selling these one dozen caps. If I sell one cap for 5 rupees and 50 paise, how many rupees will I get in total? Just then, Babban was passing by. Bunny stopped Babban and asked him, Babban, how much money will I get for one dozen caps if I sell one cap for 5 rupees and 50 paise? It is very easy, Bunny. A cap costs 5 rupees and 50 paise. To find the price of a dozen or 12 caps, we have to multiply the price of one cap by 12. Babban told Bunny. I see. Uh, but there is also a decimal point in the middle. So how do I do this multiplication? Bunny told Babban. I will teach you. Look, first we'll write the price of one cap like this. Now, we will multiply 550 by 12, just as we do any multiplication. Saying this, Babban quickly multiplied it on a paper in this manner and wrote 6600 as the answer. Wow! Then will I earn 6,600 rupees? Bunny excitedly asked Babban. No, Bunny. Now we have to see how many digits are there after the decimal point in the numbers being multiplied. Can you tell me how many digits are there after the decimal point in... 5 rupees and 50 paise? Babban asked Bunny. Two digits. Bunny quickly replied. Absolutely right. So, we will write the decimal point in the answer in such a way so that there are only two digits after the decimal point and then we will get our answer. <laughs> now I get it. If I put the decimal point here, there will be only two digits or two zeros after the decimal point. Oh wow! I'll earn 66 rupees by selling 12 caps. <laughs> On saying this, Bunny started dancing happily. Children, if Bunny had sold only 11 caps instead of a dozen caps, can you tell how many rupees would Bunny have received? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. We will first multiply 5.50 with 11 in this way. And now, because there are two digits after the decimal point in 5.50, we will write the decimal point in the answer in this way. The total cost of 11 caps would be 60 rupees and 50 paise. Let's see what Bunny and Babban are doing now. Bunny thanked Babban for helping him and took his bag and headed towards the city. Children, in this video, we learned to solve some more interesting puzzles 
related to 10th and 100th. In the next video, we will learn to solve even more interesting puzzles. Hello children, in the previous video, we learned to solve some fun word puzzles related to 10th and 100th. In this video, we will learn to solve even more interesting puzzles. In the previous video, Bunny was going to the city to sell his caps. All of Bunny's caps got sold and he became very happy. Now, Bunny is thinking that he will sell quilts. Bunny has come to uncle's shop to buy cloth to stitch his quilts. He wants to sell quilts of two different lengths. The yellow quilt would be 3.45 meters long and the blue quilt would be 4 meters long. Bunny bought the cloth for his quilt from uncle and returned home. Bunny is thinking, How much longer would the blue quilt be compared to the yellow quilt? Oh, let me find the answer by using the subtraction process. In 3.45, 45, 45 is the 4500th part. But there is no 100th part in 4. So I can also write 4 as 4.00. Now I will subtract 345 from 400 first using this simple process of subtraction. That makes it 55. Now, uh, because there are two digits after the decimal point, I will write the decimal point in the answer in such a way so that there are two digits after the decimal point. Thought Bunny. Oh, the blue quilt is 0 0.55 meter longer than the yellow quilt. And because a centimeter is one hundredth part of a meter, 0 0.55 meter will be equal to 55 centimeters. Thought Bunny. Bunny stitched his quilts and left for the city to sell his quilts. Children, in this video, we learned to solve even more interesting puzzles related to 10th and 100th.